Welcome to part two of the pallet guitar build. In this video, I will be getting the bulk of the body prepared, carved, and glued up. To start, I will lay out, joint, and glue the blanks for the top, back, and core sections of the body. Here, I am checking that the blank will be big enough for the back, as well as checking where any pin knots and nail holes will end up when finished. As for those nail holes, I'll deal with those a bit later. Now a bit more about this guitar. This is a very experimental build for me. Most of the build is going to be techniques and ideas I've never tried before, all while using woods not normally used for the bulk of a guitar build. In this guitar, I'll be using pallet wood for the top, back, and bulk of the neck, which in this case is a southern yellow pine, and a western red cedar for the core of the body and the rest of the neck, along with a Zerocote headstock veneer and fretboard. I'm also going to be attempting an inlay technique I've never tried before, but we'll get a bit deeper into that later. And one last final touch up with a hand plane to make sure we have a perfect joint. You may notice I'm using a Japanese hand plane and will be throughout the rest of this build. I just picked up a pair of these to try out and so far I'm liking how they're working for me. One of the best ways to check for a perfect joint is to hold it up to a bright source of light. And since I'm in sunny Florida, there always seems to be one around. You may notice throughout this build I use mainly Type Bond 1. In my opinion, it dries a bit harder than either Type Bond 2 or 3 and is a bit less cold creep because of that. It's also reversible glue with a bit of water and heat. You may also notice I tend to use way too much glue in my joints, which makes a big mess. But on the bright side, I've never had a starved glue joint. Now we need to make sure all of the blanks are flat. And since I don't own a thickness sander and my planer can't really handle stock this wide, I do it by hand. First thing is to evaluate the board and find the high and low spots. Cross planing at an angle to the grain, followed by straight planing along the grain, is one of the best ways to isolate and eliminate all those high spots, while still ensuring the entire board remains flat. Thank you. 
core blank is flat, I'll go ahead and cut out and sand the perimeter. Now it's time to cut and sand the inside. Now to trace the template one last time before we cut out the back. This is actually an earlier revision of my template. I've since changed the F-hole shape and decided on only two pickups. Time for the fun part, carving the back plate. I start off with marking the final edge thickness on the plate around the perimeter, as well as a rough idea of the lowest carved portion on the top, then begin to carve between those two lines, creating a dish-like hollow between them. Once the initial edge carving is done, a second line is drawn near the center of the plate, indicating the area I will not be carving. I then carve from that line down to the previously carved area, creating a smooth transition. At this point, I go back and refine the edge of the carving a bit more, before finally moving on to planing.
Now we're at the stage where the violin maker's planes come out and the surface is smoothed and refined further, followed up finally by scraping and sanding, which was actually done off camera. We're finally at the stage to deal with those leftover nail holes from that pallet wood. Initially I was thinking about filling them with a black epoxy, but finally decided to go a different route. Here I am preparing the small pieces of aluminum rod that will be inlaid into the nail holes to simulate the nails actually still being there. Once all the pieces have been cut and cleaned up, they are tapped into the existing holes. And then finally filed and sanded flush to the surface. And here's the result. Now the back is prepared and ready to be glued onto the core section. If you look closely, you may notice that the inside of the back plate has been carved as well. Unfortunately, I didn't get that part filmed, but we'll revisit that later when we carve the top. Once all the glue squeeze out was cleaned up and this dried, I went ahead and trimmed the edge flush with a router off camera and did some initial sanding to clean everything up. And here's where we are so far in this build. Next up, in part 3, I will be getting started on the neck and getting the top plate carved. 